Hi, we're gonna start putting this engine together. Got all my parts on the side cleaned up, ready to go. I have my assembly lube, my W40, and my engine oil over there. I actually have a bucket over here too. Now, uh, I had to clearance the block out in order to clear the cam up here, right here and in here, because the cam has some extra lift. I had to clearance the rod cap bolts over here. This was a little bit of a mistake over here. Uh, I had I was using the carbide tip and I couldn't get it in here very well. I took a little bit too much off over here so I had to use the uh, I found that the cutoff wheel on the die grinder worked better in here. But that's not going to be detrimental to the engine. I had to do the same over here for the other rod cap and I had to clearance a little bit on the top here as well as the bottom. Here's a better angle. Here's the spot where I had to clearance it on the bottom for the rod. That was pretty much it. Did it both on both sides. Cleaned it all up. So that's all ready for assembly. As for the cylinders, you want to use a W40 or an engine oil. You don't want to use assembly lube on the actual cylinders. Okay, now Next is, I have my camshaft set aside, that's ready to go, my crankshaft's all cleaned up and oiled up, ready to go. On for, to the other parts I have for this engine. Well, I upgraded the valves, I'm sorry, I upgraded the connecting rods and the pistons. I also had to upgrade the camshaft and the valves and valve springs and everything. So the valve, valve springs, retainers are all aftermarket. They're a higher spring tension. The rockers are early style rocker. So the studs are a bigger studs than what the newer ones had. And then the aluminum rockers have a little bit better uh, mounting hardware. It's stronger. So we're going to see how that holds up. If I have to, I can get aftermarket rockers for it. So that's all. Should all be good and copacetic. As another thing I had to do is, because I had two parts engines, I had two sets of push rods. So I grabbed the steel push rods from the other engine to add to this one so I don't have to have the aluminum on the exhaust side. So that's all straightened out. And that pretty much covers it. Uh, another thing we're going to be doing is I could run a higher compression ratio on this but I might wind up having to put run pump gas in there. I don't know. I have to run a compression test after it's all together but I'm going to put the thicker uh, graphite head gaskets on it to give me a little more uh, space on the heads. So you get this all cleaned up now the way. Now the oil pump didn't fit. I wanted to put an oil pump on here. Why is that not focusing? There we go. Oil pump didn't fit on here. The bushing is for another engine block. The 18 horsepower block that had the corroded cylinders unfortunately had too much cylinder wear to be used. I had to use my 20 horsepower block. And the crankshaft is different. I had to use this crankshaft with this block. So it was eight dollars for block, fifty dollars for car parts, gasket kit. I have a repair manual on the way. I haven't gotten it yet. That's money out. So I'm adding all this stuff up. The, these are brisk spark plugs. They were thirty-eight dollars. Valve springs, valve guides, stainless steel valves, exhaust header kit, which I didn't add the money in here. I don't think. I got that in here. Exhaust, pistons, rods, oil, oil filter, camshaft. So all about $1,629 out of pocket into this so far. And that's not counting the uh, exhaust hardware or mounting hardware to put the engine in. So uh, I'm going to continue on. I got some torque specs back here. Got my sump cover head torque, rocker torque, rocker cover torque, the rocker clearance which is with the cam, the cam specs, intake manifold and flywheel nut, all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna start putting them in and I'll kick you guys on as I go. So let's get her done. Okay, got my rods and pistons in. Put the number one in first, torque it down. And you put your number two in, torque it down. 
put all four of your tappets in. I suggest they lube on all the bearing surfaces and the tappets so they don't fall out of place on you. Then I, uh, once the tappets are up and out of the way and held in place with the assembly lube, you can drop your cam in. Now, uh, I have a longer bolt on one side for this governor that the cam has the line up with. So I'll get that quick. There we go. That keeps that centerpiece from spinning. And uh, not sure what the OEM specs were, but ARC rods are 170. I tighten these down to 175 inch pounds. And uh, if you don't want to go pouring your oil on those wrist pins, you can fill it up with oil and tilt the whole block to all the different directions to coat everything in oil, which is what I'm going to do after I get it together. Now, uh, some of you might be wondering why to do a performance build on these, why change the rod ratio. Well, if you get longer rods in here, you get more dwell time at, uh, at the, as the piston sits at top dead center. You get more cylinder pressures before it starts going down. And that'll help with low end torque. I'll put a video in the description below from ARC talking about long stroke versus short stroke. Horsepower is about the same, it's just where your torque is at. The cam is a mild cam from Precision Cams and the pistons are from Performance uh, Carrier Performance as well. They were a package deal. I got them all together. You can order custom rods and pistons if you'd like. You just gotta figure out what your block height is from here to here from the crankshaft center line to the deck height which on this engine is right around six and a half just over six and a half inches just so you know so the original rods were 4.171 inches long these aftermarket rods are 4.520 inches long and uh, the original pistons had sat a little bit below deck these are flush so that's going to up my compression as well the swept volume is 284 cc's per cylinder the head volume is 25 cc's and the gasket displacement, which is how much uh, displacement you get between the the head and the block as for volume that gasket takes up is about 5.16 cc's if it's about uh, 10 thousandths, 15 thousandths, somewhere around there. Which brings me uh, up to a compression ratio of about 10.5, which is what all that was about. 10.5 to 1. Now if you know what your atmosphere pressure is and you run a compression test, that'll give you an idea on what your uh, pressure in your cylinder is. Case in point, it was a 10 to 1, and the atmosphere pressure is 15 PSI. Obviously, you'd get a pressure of 150 PSI. But you gotta know what your actual atmosphere pressure is to get an accurate reading on that. So that's one way of telling what your compression ratio is, which I'm gonna do once I get this all together. So, gonna grab my sump, but before I continue, I have to put a O-ring right here, which is the oil feed to the engine. I'll bring that over on the workbench, but I gotta clean all this stuff up. I gotta consolidate some of these things. Matter of fact, I think I might put these heads on before I go putting the cover on it because I need to see if the rockers and everything are all gonna work together. Nah. Eh. Let me see how what how it goes. Okay. Can can continue on. I think I'm gonna put the heads on. Just loose. I'm not gonna tighten them down. Okay. Hang on. I just have this pulley on here just so I can rotate it by hand because there's a lot of tension on it. But uh, right now I'm looking for coil bind, which I don't expect there to be any because these are after market springs for the extra lift. Anyway, these are the factory lifters. I tightened up the lash on there. And as you can see, there's no coil bind in there. There's plenty of room for those coils in there to do their thing. I don't feel anything binding up in the rotating assembly. It all seems to be working. I'm spinning with one hand here. Everything all looks good. That one looks like it's getting a little bit tight. See, that one's close, but it's not bound up. There's still room in there. Something you gotta watch out for. See if I can't see it through there. Yeah, you can see the space in there, I think. 
you get the idea. The springs aren't, the spring coils aren't up against each other, so it should all be fine. That thing does not turn easy. Let me tell you what. Hey. Gotta get the tension off of those so I can take it apart. Okay, I'm gonna continue on. There's no gasket in here, so this is gonna get a little bit higher and I'll have to thread these down a little bit further. Hopefully uh, everything adjusts up fine. I'm a little bit worried that the rods might be a little bit short because this might have, this uh, aftermarket cam might have a smaller base circle, I don't know. But no big deal. We'll continue on. Got my sump cover prepped. I have the oil filter filled up with some oil. I stuck some Vaseline inside the uh, rotors for the gear pump so that doesn't run dry. And I put my new seals in. The bearings aren't bad. They're nice and tight. There's no wobble in those. So that's all primed and should be good to go. And uh, I got my o-ring in the block right here. There's a smaller o-ring for the older blocks that predate May of 97. After May of 97 they're a little bit uh, bigger. So just a heads up for that. There's usually a paper in the gasket kit to let you know about that, but that's not something you want to forget because that's what seals up your oil gallery. Got my gasket on. The gasket is sitting on there nice. I have all my bolts here and cleaned up ready to go on. So I'm going to torque down the sump cover. And I'm going to slap the heads on on both sides and make sure nothing's binding up in there before I go torquing these down and crush the gasket. And uh, you can look up online what the torque specs and the sequences. I'm not going to bore you putting all these bolts in. And I'll kick you guys back on once I get everything back on. So I'm going to put the heads and the cover on. And continue on. Okay, I left the gasket off so I wouldn't have to worry about getting it soaked in oil. Now as for a little tip when you're putting these together, first thing that's going to line up is the oil pump. You want to make sure the oil pump gear is lined up with the timing gear. You can stick a screwdriver and rotate that gear a little bit till it lines up. The next thing that's going to start to line up is the camshaft. And the camshaft starts to line up with the sump cover almost the same time this seal comes up to the lip right here. So, uh... You get it up to the, the dowels, you watch your gasket, and uh, if you have to, you can stick the screwdriver up inside, up against the can gear, and lift the gear to get it to go into the sump cover. So here's your tips for that. Now, I threw the heads on without the gaskets, and I tightened up the lash. The lash isn't t uh, adjusted correctly, but the idea is just to make sure everything's cleared, so everything just needs to be tight. And uh, I'm cranking over the block now. I'm checking to make sure nothing's binding up anywhere. And because there's no head gasket in here, if it's clearing without the head gasket, then it should clear with the head gasket. So I don't think there's going to be inter any interference there. Everything seems to be cranking over nice. No problems. So we'll put it right back up to the timing marks for the gears. I'm going to take this pulley off and this cover back off and put the gasket on officially. This thing's ready to start going together. Uh, the whole rotating assembly is working good. Everything's in time like it should be. So I can put it all together and know nothing's going to interfere anywhere. Okay. So I didn't torque these. I just put two bolts on by hand. See, uh, when you're doing all these aftermarket uh, parts, you want to make sure everything is copacetic and working together and not binding up anywhere. And you got to make sure you clearance things. So, uh, case in point, you want about 50 thousandths clearance between the moving parts and the block because things are going to flex a little bit when you start revving them up to, in this case, 4,500 RPMs, but in some cases, as high as 9,000 in some of these engines. And uh, you can actually get ported out heads that will support that kind of RPM. So, let me take this all apart. We'll put the gaskets all on and we'll stick it together and torque it all down. And like I said before, you can t check your torque sequence and torque specs for the heads and the sump online or get a manual. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to bore you doing all of these bolts, okay? So, I'm going to continue. Okay, I got the rockers all 
torqued down and lash adjusted. And I put a little bit of assembly lube right on top of the rockers above the push rods and above the valves and then it drips down and gets on here. I'm gonna see if I can't get some oil up in here. I think when I fill this up with oil, I'm just going to flip the engine right upside down with the vent capped off and it'll soak the whole upper half of this engine. I'm just going to let it sit and that will lube up the valves really good after I fill it up with some oil. But yeah, I did both sides, lubed everything up. Because it's hard to get the uh, oil down up in the stem. They should have been oiled when they were put together at the shop. But heads are all torqued down, the sump covers torqued down, gaskets are all in. And one thing I'm going to do when I go to put the valve covers on, I'm going to put a little bit of RTV on the thread so the threads don't leak on these. Because I don't really trust these fiber gaskets to get the threads themselves. Uh, granted, these do have a plastic washer insert on them, but that's not going to be a foolproof system. So I was just going to put some RTV on those threads. Okay, so let me get those on, and I'll turn you back on. Okay, topped her off with some oil. Torqued down the co valve covers. These are 25 inch pounds for these two studs. Is I'm gonna I torqued that one at 25 inch pounds as well, and uh, put a cap on the vent and the pulse pump nipples right here, and flipped it completely upside down and where both of these cylinders get oil. And I also pointed it face down so the bushing would get oil on it as well. Okay. Okay, a little quick tip. Getting these starter bolts can be a pain in the butt. So the first thing I did is I put the stator on with two bolts, finger tight. Stick the starter on and get that tightened down because the wires have to go behind that. You can see them back underneath here. Wires go behind the star there. Then you can sneak this bolt in, put this panel on, and put your other bolts in. These are all the shorter. 10 mil head and bolts and then you can put your 7 mil in for your stator and tighten those all down and that makes putting that starter on a whole lot easier I'm going to go put the flywheel on and that's going to get torqued down to 125 foot pounds so I'm going to stick some rope into the cylinder uh, at top dead center and tighten down that nut okay I'll have the flywheel on before I turn you guys back on and I might even have the ignition coils tightened down and I'll show you a little trick with those too. Okay, first things first, I put the side panels on. Uh, I didn't tighten the bolts on these yet on either side. This top panel, I put the choke on and put the bolts in. I'm never seizing all the bolts, including the stator bolts and the coil bolts. They're all uh, coated in a little bit of never seize. And when I tighten this one panel down, I pushed it down because sometimes the top of this will bind up with the blower cover. And I tighten these down. I can readjust these after I get the blower cover on. And if you look at these flywheels, there's cutouts for these screws for the coils. In which case, you can get a screwdriver in here. I'd suggest loosening them with a 7 mil, and you can put them all the way in and out with a screwdriver here. And that's your little shortcut. So we'll bottom that out. I think I'll do this one live just so you guys can see how it's done. A lot of people have a hard time with these. And I'm not tightening these down, I'm just getting them all the way in. I got two feeler gauges here set to 12 thousandths. Let me see if I can get those in the light. I'll stick one under one side of the coil and one on the other. Okay, I'm not going to do that on camera because I need two hands to do that. And I'll tighten down these coils and continue on. These all together. I got my shaft on. I made my screen and uh, 
Got her all together. Now, uh, something I did wish I'd done to begin with, but didn't think about was I should have put the intake manifold on finger tight as well as the head's finger tight to line everything up and then torque down the heads and take the manifold off. That would have saved me a lot of aggravation because the uh, manifold bolts didn't want to line up with the heads just right. Other than that, everything else went together fine. When you put the voltage regulator on, I suggest using the screw type bolts, which they usually come with, and only tightening these down with a screwdriver. You don't want to create, tighten those up down very much. Once I got the blower cover on, then I tightened all of these uh, covers down. I had to kind of figure out how it all went together because some of these parts are from the 18 horse, not all of these were on this 20. And I cinched down all of these bolts and got them all straightened out and oriented. And I've already been playing around with some exhaust. Uh, I can actually have a Y that comes out over about this direction over here. Not sure what I'm going to do with exhaust. I think I want to meld them down to a 1 inch pipe. I don't want to have a big 2 inch or inch and a half, whatever it is, collector. So now I'm going to stick a pulley on there and crank it over and get everything primed up with some oil. And uh, I got the governor all cinched up. Actually had to replace the piece up in the carburetor from a Kohler. That's one of those things you just gotta make it work. Not sure what the RPMs will be until it's all put together. Got the governor adjusted up. And I might need to adjust the idle screw, or the idle spring tension on that as well when I get it all set up. Now, uh, I want to run a compression test on this after I get it primed up with some oil. I want to crank it over by hand for a couple minutes. So once I get it, uh, this hole cleaned up out here and I crank that over for a few minutes and I get, I'll run a compression test on it and we'll see what we're getting. And I also got to see if I can't find information as to what the atmosphere pressure is right now. So I can come up with somewhat of a compression ratio. And I'm also curious as to whether or not this factory starter is going to crank it over. There is a aftermarket starters you can put on here. I just don't want to try and make it work right now because that costs money so we'll get to that later okay got her all wired up and ran a compression test on it but before we get to that the idea of this build is I went from a factory rod length which was 4.17 inches long rod length to a aftermarket rod which is 4.52 inches long a longer rod helps improve a low end torque. So, in itself, helps horsepower. I forgot to mention how long the rod, the rod is quite a bit longer than the factory OEM ones. The next thing is, is the pistons come up flush with the deck and they don't have the dish in them. So that also helps the compression ratio immensely. And uh, I ran a guess as to what the compression ratio was going to be, but I wasn't 100% sure on it. So I looked up what the atmosphere pressure would be at my elevation, which is right around 1600 feet, at the temperature, which is right around 50 degrees right now, 55 degrees outside. So figuring in it, it a calculator said about 13.83 psi. So I ran a compression test at like 175, which pushed my compression ratio over 12 to 1. So, like I said, 175 psi compression on this engine, which is awesome. Except I'm not 100% sure if I'll be allowed to run the C12 VP fuel. If I have to run gasoline, I'll have to stack head gaskets. I'll have to take two of the graphite head gaskets and sandwich them between these steel head gaskets to kind of like a, uh, make a little bit of a layer. So I'll have the graphite, the steel, and the graphite again. That'll be tripling up my gaskets. And that can lower my compression ratio. I just have to wait to hear back from them. Also, I was wor a little worried about not having the decompression on the new cam as to whether or not the starter was going to crank over it. Or crank it over, I'm sorry. And I'm pleased to say... <laughs> That cranks over no problem. 
So there she is, all together, just waiting to hear back as to whether or not C12 would be allowed at the class at the Jacktown show. So fingers crossed C12 will be okay. If not, it's not the end of the world. I can go back in there and readjust it. That's the life of tractor poles is conforming to all the rules. So hopefully you found that somewhat helpful. Also, the rods and piston combinations came from Carrier Performance. You can look them up on the internet. They're stationed out. Uh, actually, I don't know where they're at. I, I know they shipped to Canada. I don't know exactly where they're at. But you can look them up online. They can help you out. So, my name is Willie. If you liked the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And have a good day. Bye.